Good morning all. Today I'm going to open some more posts to continue my projects. So yes, it's post bag. Let's start with these two because these have been holding up uh, one of my projects. So let's get that moving forwards. In here we have blue connectors and in this one there are Green connectors. Oh yes, these are the three-way ones. Oh, did I get three ways of the blues? <laughs> I don't think I did. Oh, of course I did. That would be completely remiss of me if I hadn't got the three ways of the blue. And the point of these is they're going to sit in these two uh, connector block positions on this PCB. And one of them has seven connections, so that requires a three and some twos. The other one has nine connections, also requiring some threes and some twos. Oh no, you could do that with all threes, couldn't you? So why the colours? Um, well, this power supply, which is uh, 12 volts in to a whole range of voltages out, um, a positive adjustable and negative adjustable, 5 volts and 3.3, I think. Well, I'm going to use plus 12, minus 12, plus 5. This power supply has blue connectors and seven outputs. So I designed this um, with seven outputs, but I'm gonna fit blue connectors here so that I immediately know by the color coding that this power supply interface is on this side. And on this side, I'm gonna put green connectors because this power supply, which is currently screwed down onto uh, some decking timber. Again, I can put 12 volts in. I think I'll put five volts in as well, various input options along here and um, this one has the nine connectors but they're green so let's color code it so for the blue connector the seven way uh, I need a three and two twos would do it wouldn't it I can't use two threes and a one because that wouldn't work so a three and oh that's a naughty little bag two twos let's um, link those together Right, that's my seven-way block. So that sits in there. These holes, though, are really massive. I've got a feeling that the footprint I used on this PCB wasn't specifically intended for these terminals, but it was a 5.08 millimeter pitch. So it kind of fits, but it, there's quite a bit of movement there. But I think I'm actually going to solder that in. I'm going to make up a nine-way as well. Get these all soldered. That can come out for the moment. And um, yeah, make this board up because I've been waiting quite a while for this. Just a little bit of pin straightening to do. They've got a teeny bit bent in the post, but not anything alarming. Okay, so that one will sit in there. Yeah, that looks good. So I shouldn't um, make the mistake of connecting that to there because it's a different color and it's a different number of connectors. This should mean I get it right every time. So let's warm the iron. Now just a, a word about this uh, through night TC15. This little cap that covers the USB uh, charge port, I thought there's a little bit of vulnerability here um, between the band and the actual plug-in bit, but actually there are two spare ones of these in the little pack that you get. So you don't need to worry too much because you've got three of these in total. Right, let's do some solderation on these uh, connectors. Oh, they're quite big, aren't they? It's gonna take a fair bit of solder to fill those holes. Ah, and I noticed actually that there was a bit of a warp on the uh, terminals. They were sort of banana shaped. So I think I'll solder these middle ones in first or even just one middle one in first. Hmm, this is quite taking quite a bit of heat. I might raise this up actually. And then I'll just remake this end one and push it in a bit. Yeah, and then, yeah, you can just about see there's a little gap in there. So I just need to hold that closed while I solder that one and then I can solder the rest. Yeah, pushing this up to 370 seems to have made this a fair bit easier to uh, flood solder into these holes. They're big, quite big holes. Really far too big for these terminal pins. Oh, this thing was bananaed in two dimensions. It was bananaed 
uh, that way and also <laughs> that way so it doesn't quite line up with my uh, silkscreen line which on these white PCBs is black. Oh, well never mind. Well that's done. Blue tack removal and I'm going to crop these down actually because uh, I've cropped those and it'll mean that this will sit a bit flatter on the bench. I'll use the Plato Model 170s for this and put that about halfway back so I get plenty of leverage on there. Yes, that's going to look good when it's done. And uh, there it is, all nice and flush cut, so it sits flat on the bench. So now I can pull this thing out of this temporary one where I was using 5 volts in and kind of taking the 5 volts and the plus and minus 12 onto my cables. These cables incidentally, well I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Let's get that one out. And so that can plug into one side of this and it faces out and then the other one which I'm going to use. This one has all the three pin connectors. This one has a couple of fours for the LED bar graph PCBs. That one plugs in that way around and that uh, gives me my 14 PCB distribution from this power supply which will be on the blue side and that's all neat. Plug my 12 volts in there and this goes to all my circuit boards. Yes I'm liking that. Yes, these pre-made cables um, all came, let me take one out, with the connections like that straight through, but with the uh, grippers both facing up. Now what that effectively means is that they'd wired pin one on one of these sockets to pin three on the other one. So I had to pull the outer two uh, pins out of the socket plastic housing and swap them over. So gradually as I use more and more of these things I shall convert these so that pin one goes to pin one not three. And to make sure that these sit at the same height because this has got feet on it uh, there are some holes in here which were going to be for the connectors but they're not really needed for that so I think I'll push a couple more of these feet through these holes and then these two things will sit on the table at the same height. Recording! So the green ones uh, were these, let me select them, colour green, pole 3, and uh, they are 10 pieces KF301 5mm, not 5.08, and there might be 5 actually because there was a slight misalignment between the holes, but minimal. Uh, 2 pole or 3 pole, blah de blah, Green three pole, uh, two dollars twenty for ten of those pieces. Free shipping, and these came from Q Town Tool. The blue ones are these ten pieces, screw terminal block, three pins, five millimeter pitch. Again, it's a KF three hundred one uh, type, and these are ninety nine cents. Free shipping from Survey twenty fourteen. Those are the three pin ones. And the two pin ones, same quantity, same description pretty much. Same price, 99 cents, free shipping, survey 2014, same seller. Right, this one is a mystery to me because I cannot identify this. None of the tracking numbers line up. I can't do it by date, can't do it by shining a torch through it. So I gave up a total mystery. What will it be? It's that. Let's cut the tape. It's got pins because they're sticking into me. Oh, it's just lots and lots of IDC connectors. Well, I've done IDC connectors before. They're required. What's interesting actually is that um, I bought 10 way IDC connectors. I also bought 10-way ribbon cable and yet bizarrely on my printer circuit board I've got an 8-way connector so I don't know quite what I was thinking but I got my 10s and my 8s mixed up. Yeah here's the ribbon cable 10-way, connectors 10-way and yet the connections on my circuit board are 8-way so 
I don't quite know what happened there, but I just had a bit of a brain meltdown. It probably doesn't matter. I mean, certainly the ribbon cable is not a problem because you can just tear off uh, two of the ways. And actually, I don't think these are going to be a problem either because I think they can just sit offset on the uh, pin array like that because I'm not using a, a full surrounded pin array. So yeah, that'll be perfectly uh, fine. I might, in the fullness of time, get some eight-way ribbon cable, or as I say, just tear two off here, and some different connectors, but these will be fine for the time being. Yeah, these are 10 pieces IDC 10-pin female header 2.54 millimeter pitch. Um, these came from Alice, uh, 110 is it? I can't read that. Uh, no, 1983, I should know that name, shouldn't I? Um, and 99 cents for each set. I bought three sets, free shipping, of course. Have you found that Alice is a bit slow to ship these days? I hate to say it because, you know, Alice was one of my favorite sellers, but I'm using her less these days because it just seems that things take a long time to turn up. Don't know, might be me. Let me know what your experiences are. Next up, let's open this one. Very bulkily packed. That would have been a postman ringing the doorbell jobby. Yeah, quite a bit of stuff in here, including these, which are ACS712 current sensors. And I bought five of them. Uh, I shall explain all in a moment. Yeah, five of these, one in a different type of bag. Um, here's a little kit of parts. And a PCB. I haven't done a kit build for quite a while. And here are some switches. And they are described as on one way and on the other way. So they're single pole, double throw, three connectors. They're quite heavy those. I wonder why they're so heavy. Well, I suppose because they're mostly made of metal. So what's with these ACS712 uh, Hall Effect current measuring devices? Well, remember this thing, the lithium-ion battery pack with the active cell balancer. Um, it's designed to balance a 4S pack, but it has five wires going to it. And I thought, well, let's go the whole hog and measure the current in every single one of those five wires. But because they're all at different potentials, because uh, each cell is in series with its neighbor, uh, I needed a five-way ammeter, an ammeter that could measure five currents at once, where all the measurement devices are galvanically isolated. And these, of course, because they've got this Hall Effect chip, are galvanically isolated. So the plan is to hook five of these up to five analog inputs of an Arduino, get a little OLED display. And I want to get back into the Arduino. I haven't done much Arduino for a long time and measure these five currents simultaneously and then see what happens when this little uh, balance transfer unit kicks in and we can see all the five currents and these are bi-directional oh no these sorry are bi-directional measuring devices i think when there's zero current through here it gives you two and a half volts out and then between two and a half and five volts is the positive or current flowing in a positive direction and if it flows the other way you get between two and a half volts and zero volts so with a bit of code you can turn that into a positive or negative current but that's what these are for now the spdt uh switches single pole double throw that's right are actually for my pong uh game which i haven't worked on for years but i quite fancy uh getting back into that because i want to make some pcbs for it because it was all built on veriboard rather horribly and uh, i'd like to get started on that again particularly the scoreboard side of things but I wanted a switch which would be PCB mounting, but not directly on the PCB. It would be somewhat offset. So I did buy some switches. I'm not sure where they are. I don't know whether they've turned up or not with um, actual PCB pins on them, right angle, so that this could be uh, have the PCB flat above it and the switch would sit underneath. Actually, I think it's got to be that way. So this goes up and down. But then I thought, well, no, it's never going to line up, is it, with my punched holes in the front panel 
So I'll just use these and run some wires up into the PCB. So that's what those are for. But these are really quite chunky and heavy. They feel like pretty good quality. And this kit, let's take a closer look at that. So this is a little CMOS chip kind of experimenting board. And I think it's uh, one of these uh, BCD to seven segment decoders. There is a seven segment display in here. It's this thing pushed into the phone. Yeah, seven second display. The CMOS chip is in there, not in any sort of protective foam. But I was looking at this and I was thinking, how have they done this? Because there are masses of diodes. They supply all these diodes. So I think they've got a sort of encoding diode matrix on the switches so that when you press these buttons, it encodes it into BCD. And then, of course, the chip decodes that and recodes it into a seven segment display and I just thought this was a bit of an oddity uh, but yeah that'll be fun to build um, I'll do that as a kit build video at some point yeah I'm quite looking forward to that hmm there's a little addendum here all in Chinese characters how interesting yes I knew that wouldn't be uh, worth doing it says eight way antelope suite no eight roads in answer Road to the baby kit. Eight road gazelle I set. Well, it's got the eight thing, so <laughs> I think it's eight switches encoding to seven segment. Eight way answering device kit, that's the one. The ammeter modules came from Survey 2014. Five pieces, five amp range, current sensor module ACS712. Uh, $7.13 for those five, free shipping. Start the recording. The switches are these, 10 pieces mini MTS-102. is the part number, three pin SPDT. They describe them as on, on, six amps, 125 volts AC, $2.33 for those 10 switches, free shipping. They also came from Servi. And the kit is an eight channel DIY electronic kit digital responder for soldering practice uh $2.48 i think is pretty good for all those bits free shipping also from serby and so i think that's going to have to be it for today because my desk is full of stuff so let's say a big thanks to my sponsor jlc pcb also a huge thanks of course to my patreon patrons who help to uh, pay for all this stuff uh, thanks also of course to through night for supplying the tc15 uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon patron of this channel, you can click this link here. There are another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And this link here will allow you to subscribe to this channel if not already subscribed. Cheerio!